This is the Ellis dividing head that I got on eBay. A dividing head is a machine that's used by machinists to cut gears, uh, drill bolt patterns. Um, basically, its, its sole purpose is to divide a circle into any number of segments. Um, there's a spindle here, and it's got a taper inside that will accept a collet. There's threads on here that will take a uh, lathe chuck, and there's also some um, some screws here so that you can mount your own kind of work pieces. This gets bolted down to a milling machine table or drill press, and the spindle here turns. So your work, imagine it's held here, and it'll rotate into uh, any number of um, divisions, basically. This uh, is where the handle would go, and there's a worm gear in here that's a 40 to 1 gear, so 40 turns of this will turn the spindle once. So the way these are typically used is there's a plate with holes that mounts right here. And there's a handle that rotates around this plate. Um, so say you want to make a 20 tooth gear there's a big chart of numbers that um, you look up uh, the number 20 and it tells you several several of these plates it tells you which plate to use which hole pattern and how many turns plus how many holes equals one division so in other words you turn this crank one full turn say and an extra five holes on this pattern here that'll equate to a certain division of a circle rotating here. It gets really complicated. Um, for one thing, I only have one of these plates. And um, this is almost an antique. It probably is an antique. I don't know when it was made. Um, and I have no idea where I would get new plates. But besides that, the idea of using this machine that manually is um, just not interesting to me. Even though I do want to cut gears eventually. So the logical thing for me to do is just to motorize it. So I have a stepper here that's mounted on this uh, aluminum bracket that I made. I bought these um, <clears throat> these two uh, pulleys on sdpsi.com <clears throat> and if you look at my website there's a, there's a source for those. But um, hopefully this is the kind of thing that I eventually want to just be able to machine on my own. So. Like I said, here's the stepper motor, and it's got a cable running to this contraption here that's uh, I purpose built for this machine. Let me turn the light off so you can see the display better. On the left side here, I have the number of divisions. On the right side is an index counter. I can change the number of divisions this way. It'll go up to 999. Let's say we want to do 60. Um, because these buttons are easy to press, there's a lockout right here. Won't let me change them. So then, just to advance the machine, I've got a momentary toggle switch. It'll go in either direction. And you can see the spindle will rotate in the number of divisions that I need it to. So this index is just um, kind of a counter for me to know where the position is relative to where I started. As you can see, it clears when I change the number of divisions. So I'll show you inside here. Wiring's kind of messy. Um, basically, got a uh, switch, a fuse. It's going to this transformer. Um, 
hopefully that's in focus. Um, this board right here is uh, just a rectifier and capacitor to give the, uh, well, it's about 30 volts DC to the motor driver, which is this board down here. Uh, let's see if you can see it. Mounted on the front here, there's a rectifier, capacitors, and a um, 7805 regulator going to another tap off of the, uh, this is an 8-volt tap from the transformer. Um, like I said, this is the stepper driver uh, board. It goes out through the DB9 connector. And I'm just using a regular serial extension cable. It seems to work fine. But it's only running at about uh, like 0.8 amps, I think. Um, the display in the controller board is pretty simple. It's um, six multiplex, seven segment displays um, and uh, driven by a pick. The buttons are um, are inputted directly, so basically it's just the pick, some resistors, the capacitor, and the uh, the LEDs. So it's pretty simple. And that's it.